Alright, hello and welcome back to another video. Today we will be once again comparing the Breville Barista Express to the Nespresso Virtual line of at-home coffee machines. Now, we've already compared these two machines general coffee and espresso making abilities, compared the flavors and the amount of work it takes to get a coffee out of each, but on that video I was getting a lot of requests to do milk based beverages, so today we'll be making two lattes, one on the Breville Barista Express and one on the Nespresso Virtuo. For this test on the Breville, I'll be using a Balzac's medium roast coffee, as on the Nespresso I'll be using the Cairo number no. 6 roast level. Obviously I can't get the exact coffee out of the Nespresso, so this is as close as we can get. So without further ado, let's start making a latte on the Breville Barista Express, and after that's done we'll very quickly make one on the Nespresso, and then compare and contrast how each of those looks and tastes. Let's jump right in. So I've already got 18 grams of beans weighed out here. I like to single dose on the Barista Express. That's just all personal preference. I also dose into a separate container to get some better distribution in the porta filter. Again, totally up to you. and move that to the side. We can fluff that up a little bit and we'll get that into our very nice and warm porta filter. This machine has been heating up the whole time I set up this set, so it is nice and hot now. This porta filter is piping hot. And we will use this distributor tool. This is a great distributor tool from Crema Coffee Products. It is dual sided, has a distributor on one side and then a tamp on the other. I will leave that linked below as well as this tamping mat that I'm using. Both great products. I always like to blow off the grind so that it doesn't get up in the group. So we'll lock this in. And we're going to be shooting for a 2 to 1 ratio today. Let's see how close we can get. looking pretty good. Now this is a single group machine meaning that I have to wait to steam until the brewing is done. On some more expensive machines and more expensive Revels, you'll get a dual boiler so you can do both at the same time. All right, we're coming up on 36 so I'm stopping right there. That looks like a pretty good shot of espresso. We've had the latte cup warming up on the rack here so that's all nice and warm. We'll pull these both out. And we'll dump our shot of espresso right in. Excellent. We'll start immediately warming up the steam wand as you have to wait for that to get up to temperature. You see it's purging out some water. And it takes a while. Again, if this was a dual boiler, that would be ready to go. So now it's just getting up to speed and you can hear it kick in once it really, really gets up to temperature. I like to quickly pause it before putting it in just so it doesn't spray everywhere. Now, some of you who are watching that might be used to using some more commercial machines, you're noticing this is taking quite a long time. Um, these Breville's, their steaming power isn't fantastic. This is an appliance grade machine after all. So you're noticing this is taking far longer. For home use, if you're making one or two or three lattes, it's really not so bad. But it certainly takes a little bit longer to get up to temperature. Almost there. Okay, I'm just going until I can no longer hold my hand on the jug. And there we go. Remove that, always be sure to purge. Make sure no milk gets stuck up and on the wand there. Now this is the machine bringing that water back down to brew temp. Okay, 
Now, we've got no guarantees, no guarantees whatsoever of latte art, but we're gonna do our best. So no latte art today for me. I probably should have been paying a bit more attention while steaming, but overall, a decent looking espresso if you ignore the whole latte art portion of it. Nonetheless, that is our first latte, and let's jump on over to the Nespresso very quickly here. Now the beauty that you're gonna see with the Nespresso is that you don't have to wait to do your brewing and your milk frothing as they are separate devices. The Breville is only a single group, which means it can't brew and steam at the same time. So you have to wait and switch between the two. Obviously with an espresso, there's two separate devices so they can both work in tandem. So that will start brewing and I will bring the Aeropresso over here and with one push of a button, that will start mixing as well. So as you can see, I'm doing absolutely nothing. Um, with the Breville, I was steaming and it's probably why I didn't get some great microfoam. I probably should have been paying a bit more attention, but here it's completely hands off. We're getting our shot of espresso and our milk is warming and frothing all at the same time. So this is in many people's eyes, more than worth the difference in quality that we might see. And seeing as it's a cheaper system overall, I can see why people opt for this option. This is super, super hands-free. So there we go. Our shot of espresso is now just finishing up. I'm gonna pull that out there and immediately dump that in. Again, that really frothy texture that we saw before in our last review hasn't changed. These side by side and you can hear this you can hear this mixing back here let's see if I can get that in the shot not sure if you'll be able to see that that's quite good this they say takes around 60 to 70 seconds and you can see that just finished there it's quite warm and as an espresso theme goes very very foamy you know what for the sake of comparison let's actually put this into my pouring mug from Breville just so that we can really do a good comparison. Okay, there's definitely some foam on there. It's not super duper coarse actually. I was expecting it to be very, very bubbly. Um, it's actually not too bad. It's certainly not latte foam. It would definitely lean more towards cappuccino, but uh, it's actually not too bad. I don't think we're gonna be able to do any latte art though. You can see the crema is very different here. It's very thick. It's a lot of foam going on. If you're a cappuccino lover, this might be good. Okay. <laughs> That's the kind of latte art I think you could expect no matter what from the Nespresso. Um, Nespresso's theme is bubbles, but it's not a full espresso machine. So I really wish I had done some, some half decent at least latte art on here, but you can at least see the difference between these two. Um, one kind of looks in my opinion like a children's impression of a latte or cappuccino and one looks like the real deal and that well, there's no argument to be made. One is a true espresso machine, although an at-home espresso machine, and one is a pod system. So you shouldn't really be surprised there. Now, let, let's taste these before the Breville gets any more uh, spoiled and cold. Yep. It's a good latte. I think, I think my milk frothing was definitely a little bit off there. It doesn't quite have the really fine micro bubbles I'm used to tasting. Uh, the texture is still good. You can see it kind of riding up the side of the cup there, which I also often find is, is the sign of some good milk froth. Let's quickly uh, cleanse our palate here, and then we'll taste the Nespresso. A lot of bubbles. That's actually not bad. You know, I'm, I'm very surprised by that. I think that if you watched my last review, one of my largest gripes with an espresso was, was the mouthfeel of the coffee. It was very watery. And I think that actually the frothed milk in a milk-based drink helps to mask that a bit. So 
These actually taste very, very similar and the texture on the Nespresso isn't actually bad now. I, I can taste a bit more of the espresso still coming through from the Breville, and that's probably because it is a real espresso, whereas the Nespresso is not. But... Yeah, going, going back to them, you, the coffee comes through a bit stronger and bolder on the Breville, but that's, that's completely expected. I'm actually very surprised by this, considering how much of, in my opinion, a blowout our last coffee comparison was between these two machines in terms of just genuine coffee experience from the Breville and a bit of a watery instant coffee experience from the Nespresso. These are far closer than I actually expected. Um, especially appearance-wise, you heard me making a bit of fun, uh, calling this a children's drawing, and I am the child that drew that. But me personally, I'm very surprised having used this machine for lattes and espresso for the better part of four years now, and having just bought the Nespresso for, as you guys know, my office purely coffee use, I didn't really bat an eye at the Aerochino milk warmer and frother. I thought it honestly hasn't come out of the box until this review here. But having drank both of these drinks, other than the slightly unprofessional childish appearance of the Nespresso latte cappuccino, the flavors are actually quite good and, and the froth milk actually masks a bit of the not true espresso that is coming through from the Nespresso machine. If I had to pick, I would pick the Breville Latte uh, 10 out of 10 times, but flavor-wise, this one isn't actually far off. So, this was a learning experience for me. I hope it was a learning experience for you. Like I said before, both of these machines, as well as the tamper, tamping mat, Aerochino, whatever, whatever you guys have an interest in, will all be linked down in the description below. Um, if you guys made it all the way to the end of this video, thanks for watching. Please leave a like if it was helpful, and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.